All right, guys. Welcome back to another episode of Dog Point Podcast. Um, today we have a guest. We have here Alan Mitchell from Maxima Canine, a good friend of mine and also dog trainer of 21 years. Lots of experience. Um, just like myself, working with pet dogs and also working with sport dogs. Um, welcome to Dog Hi. Point. Thank you for having me. Thanks for coming. It's my pleasure. Um, I have gotten a lot of calls recently from veterinarians saying, Mark, please, please make a, a podcast or a video on, on separation anxiety. Our customers' dogs driving us crazy. So here we are. And who, who better to talk about a subject like this than another trainer yeah. who understands why and how it's happening, right? So the issue is that these dogs, you cannot leave the room. You cannot leave them alone. The moment they're by themselves for 10 seconds, they panic and cry and bark and pee and poop and chew up everything to relieve the stress that they're under. And it's all perfectly avoidable. Yeah. Listen, the, um, unfortunately, um, a lot of passionate pet owners have caused it, uh, it upon themselves for the fact that the way in which they treated the dog and cared for the dog, while they did the thing, they, their best job, what they did was to prevent the dog from becoming independent over a period of time. Um, these pandemic puppies, while we were all home and we thought it was a good idea to get a puppy, it was probably a good idea to get a puppy while you're home. What they did not do was to create structure to the puppy's life. So that puppy grew up being with the owner 24-7 inside right. the house, on the lap, while they're in a, a work meeting, the puppy's under the chair. So the puppy never developed any form of independence and they actually scared out of, out of their mind if they left alone. You yeah, know, and because it has never not, happened before. Yeah, it's not, it's not a good yeah, way yeah. to live. We think, we think that we love our dogs so much and it's good to have them so close to us. But you know what? Um, these same people, they wouldn't do that with their own children. They want their children, they send them to kindergarten, they send them to pe primary school and so on because then they want them to develop and, you know, become independent. But then with the dogs, we do the complete yeah. opposite. And it's not a good life for the dog, you know? So. No, it can't be. It can't be because you're preventing the dog from making experiences, yeah. right? And uh, another uh, topic regarding this is crate training. Yeah. Uh, it is perfectly healthy for a dog to be crate trained it yeah. this teaches the dog that it's okay to be alone at times 100 percent, right and on top of that little puppies supposed to be sleeping up to 18 hours a day this constant attention takes hours of sleep away from the puppy yeah. and then they end up being nervous dogs yeah. because they don't get enough sleep yeah. they don't develop properly right because the body does not yeah. get to shut Anxiety, down to yeah. divide yeah. cells and do all yeah. the necessary and it it adds to the problem rather than solving anything you're not doing the dog any favors not health wise not even the cortisol output in a dog yeah. when it's under stress like this is unhealthy it shaves years of the life expectancy of a dog yeah if they're under prolonged um, cortisol yeah, production was, you yeah. know and and it's 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 mentally unhealthy it's physically unhealthy and it's, it's just plain wrong in my mind yeah. right that's what i would call it i i'm german right you, yeah. you know i don't have a filter so it, it's just wrong yeah, I mean, right, call should, a spade a spade. Yeah, I mean, people should understand that uh, the dog or the puppy in growing, they need their own time. They need their time to sit, to relax, to rest, and just to be on their own and get accustomed to it. So, puppies usually may cry a little bit, but uh, the, the the response that you should have is to leave them for a period of time, put structure to their life. So you don't start off leaving them in a the crate for twelve hours, but you put them in a the crate, and you don't put another thing. Another big problem is. We, okay, so they decide to get the crate and they, they agree, yes, they're going to use the crate, but they only use the crate when they leave any home. Yeah, right? so, they, so it's just they, another cue for the no dog to, and to panic. There's no structure, the dog knows that you're leaving, it's a whole shutdown of everything, and it's a problem, right? So what you need to do is to create structure and over time, build up the time in which the puppy is in the crate and do it when you're home. Don't only do it when you're going to, because then there's a, there's a kind of toxic association to the crate. Yeah. Which you don't want, yeah. right? So you're working against yourself that way. I advise my clients always turn that crate into a magic box. Yeah, right. Good you, things happen. You start, you start off with putting some food in it. Yeah, right. At, at the entry level, then in the middle, and then yeah. towards the end, so the dog has a so you progression never of going force in. Them into it. Yeah, yeah. 
And then when they're comfortable going in, when they're playing with your kids, toss a handful of kibble in the back. Yeah. And when they're past the crate, they smell it. Yeah. And then they go inside, suddenly there's food. Yeah. They don't know how it got there. And but they know it's there. So they keep checking more often. Yeah. And you find they're spending more and more time in the crate yeah, because they want to yeah, know yeah. when this food is going to yeah. drop. And once they get them used yeah. to it, dogs and then, and then while they're in it, in passing, they're not looking at you, toss some toss food in it yeah. for the side vents, yeah. right? So this thing, there's always food appearing out of nowhere. Yeah. They love it. I have customers, dogs that go in the crate and then it's open and you call them out and they inside. I'm not leaving here. Yeah. This thing has that, food yeah, in yeah, it. Yeah, that's the point. <laughs> I don't want to make. come yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah. And once they're at that point, then you close it and you still feed them a little bit. Then you close it for more than five minutes, more than 10 minutes, half yeah. an hour. I tell people, put your dog in the, in the crate, watch a movie. Yeah. When you finish with the movie and the puppy's still quiet, let it out. The puppy doesn't need to be on your lap for And the when movie. the puppy comes out, play a little tug of war, get yeah. some physical activity yeah. to burn off some energy and then do it again, watch yeah. another movie. Yeah. And so they understand that going in the crate is normal and then while you playing talk with the, with the puppy another family member put some food in it yeah so when you put them back in as hey there's food again yeah. you know and you can take the food out of their daily allowance anyway out of their, their after their, their daily ration yeah. yeah yeah of course and and so you can that that crate is the best thing since sliced bread yeah, of the course dog. they should they have some it. sort of they enclosed space it. and dogs naturally even going back to dogs in a while they always dig some kind of little burrow or cave or something like that and yeah. that's their personal space and you find that once you do it right dogs voluntarily go into that space they without you once the door is open yeah. they go in on their own to rest to relax to stay away from yeah. you know people and so on people tell me a lot like you know after the crate training now the dog is every time i'm not doing something with the dog i find the dog sleeping in the, in the crate. crate yeah exactly because they love it exactly. if you if you teach them correctly how to to get into a crate they love it they will they will not hesitate to go in there the only time a dog resents a crate if if that was done wrong yeah, and exactly. If, as yeah. you said, yeah. they're only locked up to leave. To leave, yeah. You know, you could so, feed them in the crate. They could, they could have their dinner in the crate. They could have their meals in the crate. Yeah. The water bowl could be there as well too, if you wish. You know, yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. So, I think it's just about creating that type of structure, that balance that the dog requires, uh, that will create make that sort of healthy relationship between the dog and the crate. Even there's a special place or a bed or something. I teach the dog to go on it. You know, give yeah. them a command, train them, or have your trainer train the dog. To, when you tell them to go on it, they go on it, and that's their that's their timeout space. Yeah, and when I was growing up, and we had multiple dogs in the household, yeah. and my father had a, a a command for it. When we sit down to eat, and everybody's walking around and everybody's smelling yeah. the food, he would sit down on the dining room table and say, "We are eating." Yeah. <laughs> and everybody went in their basket or yeah, on their pillow. Yeah, yeah. They yeah. knew they couldn't be around respect. the dinner table, yeah, yeah, right? They had respect for that. And yeah. it's only when we get up and, and carry the, the, the used wares to the to the um to the um kitchen, then they were allowed to come out again. Yeah. Yeah. Right? That's a good way to do it. Instead of having them, you know, jump all over the um the, the, the table, the dinner table, yeah, or, or kind getting of scraps, push you know, up and, and beg and there's no and peace. The dog the dog is anxious. Right, and then you can't eat, you know, peacefully. So it, it, it's not good for both parties. So you know, we need to really just sit back, think about what we're doing with our dogs, add that structure to their life so that they could live a peaceful and actually an enjoyable life. Because nobody wants to be full of anxiety yeah, and no, anxious. Nobody for wants to be a nervous yeah. wreck. Yeah, you know, you know, on purpose. You're never gonna enjoy your you dog know. as well. The same yeah. dog that you love so much. Yeah, and, and and that is the next point, right? You, you say you love your dog, but you're doing everything possible to harm it. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes innocently, you so, know. And, but and my thing is, there's advice. Seek seek yeah. good advice. And I try I try to explain it to, to customers first, and then sometimes when I feel I'm not getting through with it, then I say it outright. Yeah. Right. Again, German. No filter. Yeah, you right. Just, you, sometimes them, you just need to say it as it is. So you're willfully harming your dog. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, well, that's know, the way they understand get offended it. Yeah. And it's like, yeah. what, what do you mean yeah. by that? I say, yeah, what you're doing is harming your dog. Yeah. Mentally. Because we create as all well the as problems. Physically, we right? create most of the problems. The owners create most of the problems. Yeah. Unless a dog has some sort of genetic issue where it's nervous or, or something like that, the, those problems are created. Yeah. And and I recently um, had a, a, one of the podcasts on basic dog ownership. Yeah. You know? So. That speaks about that, too. yeah. Okay. Because oftentimes people have a, a dog that is outside of their skill level, 
Yeah, too much for them. Right? Yeah. So you, you're weighing 94 pounds, but you want a Mastiff. Yeah. <laughs> you know? <laughs> so it's so, a movie somewhere. <laughs> right? <laughs> and look but cool. Now, I've had customers, and I have presently one, where they do that successfully. Yeah. But that is because they started when the dog was just about old enough yeah. to, to start training. Yeah. Right? They did their research. They, you know, they yeah. understood what yeah. it was about and that they understood that there's a risk in that, right, in terms of their ability and they, s they sought out help right from the start. Yeah. You a lot know? of times, unfortunately, people get puppies or the puppies are given to them and it's the wrong dog, it doesn't suit them. My thing is, if you're going to embrace that, you know, beautiful gift given to you, seek the right ad seek advice, yes. Yes. seek the right help, you know, get a professional in, or at least there's a lot of information out there, some not so good, some good. Seek the information and, you know, reach out to people who know more about this than yeah. you, you know. Because so. must of puppies, right? My experience with must of puppies has been that they're really sweet and nice with everybody in the family until they're about a year. Yeah. Then they start. <laughs> and then they start becoming bullies. Yeah. And then they knock over the children. And then they do all kind of thing. And then people were walking those dogs in the road and they were fine. You know, they taught them don't react to other dogs. and like, But when it comes to people, yeah. all of a sudden, people that they saw every day walking in the road, they now want to attack. Yeah. And that is simply a matter of maturity because the breed was it's, created to be fiercely autonomous. Yeah. And the idea is if you're not family, you're an enemy. Exactly. Right? Because they were raised on farms Open where, spaces, where there's yeah. no fence yeah, and, and they had to keep humans, wolves, bears and foxes yeah. away from the bit, farm. Yeah. That's it. That's period. It. Correct. Right? And that's what they're doing. And then people are upset with the dogs for doing it. Yeah, and it's a you total know? natural be natural behavior. Research in your breed yeah. would have told you yeah. that. You know, so But it looks cool. You know? The thing is the dog looks cool, it's a big, nice dog. Everybody yeah. loves a big dog. Well yes. most people do, Trinidadians do for sure. Yes. And it's it seems to be a fierce dog, so it's a protector as well. Yeah. And mm -hmm. they go with it and they don't think about anything else, just the aesthetics of it and that's it. And, you know? And well trained, there's no problem with yeah, it. Of course. But you know, the owner has to be trained, the dog has to be trained, and they have to be made a team for that to work. Yeah. Otherwise it's no end of trouble. You raised that, you touched on you a know? point that I wanted to speak about as you as you mentioned it. And it's reg with regards to dogs at home with children, young right. children. And that is something that flies over the dog owner's head in the sense that you have to treat the children to respect the dog as yes. much as you t teach the dog to respect the children. It's a two-way street. Yeah. It yeah. has to be. Yeah. Because children do all sorts of crazy things. Mm -hmm. Right? And when somebody gets bitten, then the dog becomes the, you know, the devil. Yeah. But in a lot of times or most times you don't see where the dog once the child may growl, the ch child may tease the dog, make the dog uncomfortable, and the dog is not going to go to the master and complain and say, listen, you need to tell him knock it off. That's not what the dog is going to do. No. The dog is going to growl, they're going to walk away, they're going to do everything to avoid that first. And then yeah. when they correct the child, that's why I call it, because they're not going to maul the child, they probably might bite them, right? Um, it's a, nobody, yeah. it's a see, big all problem. All of a sudden, it's the dog's fault yeah. when it was the owner's fault all yeah, along. All along, they never observed yeah. it, you know, so... You need yes, to monitor I mean, that you, interaction. You see endless, endless videos online, right? Where dogs behave perfectly nice with children. And those yeah. have been well socialized with the children and it was done the right way, right? Where they snuggle up with a toddler yeah, and, and that kind of thing. And, that, and then we have a dream that right? that's going to happen. And then, and then people watch these videos and, and think, yes, yeah, so my dog is like that. Yeah. <laughs> Automatically because, yeah. you know, he's a good dog. And when the dog growls at the child or, or you know, walks away every time the child approaches, it doesn't dawn on, on them that maybe the dog is walking away because the child pulled the ears or the, the tail before. The dog has before, been triggered to do that. The right? dog is not going to wake up And the dog is trying to avoid the confrontation yeah. by walking away. But if the child keeps coming and keeps pushing, at some point in time, the dog is going to defend itself. Yeah. You know? That's right. No dog is born child aggressive. Yeah. None. There is some bad dogs. Yeah. Right? No doubt. But I have even those, I have never seen them be natural child aggressive. No. They, they become that way because of an incident. Yeah, yeah, that's right. That is a it's child a, picking up a puppy a and it behavior. accidentally slips and they drop to yeah. the ground. That can be enough for a dog to be put off for life. Yeah, some dogs, children. they pre-drive, you know, they, they, they could get a little bit antsy around kids and so on. Especially when they're screaming. Yeah, they're not born that way. Yeah, not, but yeah, you know? they're not, they're not yeah. born. And if you put down rules right from the start with the dog, like if, if somebody has the dog first and then gets a newborn 
I tell them, teach your dog not to cross the doorway of the nursery. Another big topic. <laughs> you know? Set boundaries for the yeah, dog. Yeah. And make the dog understand that this little inch room is under your protection. Yeah, yeah. That's important. It's, it's and so after yeah. a few days or weeks, you can then, you know, let him sniff a foot. Yeah, yeah. And then, while it's on your arm. Yeah. Right? And then you pull it away again. You say, leave it alone. <laughs> right? But, well, and yeah. teach your dog that, you know, this is a family member and so, he's higher rank so than you. So, yeah. you know, because. Be you know, respectful. dogs dogs view babies and little children like they view other dogs. That's what people need to understand. So the 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 nice picture you saw online of the baby cuddled up with a dog, that's that's nice, that's beautiful. But don't assume that that is gonna naturally happen with you no. and the baby you just bring in. My I'm very plain and straight about it. Because the care and the, the welfare of the baby is precedent. Yeah. All right? That's priority. It's it's for me it's it's very plain. Teach your dog that the baby is off limits. Yeah. This is mine, and you don't need to interact with it so strongly. I brought it here. You could pass by and get a sniff while you're going, but you are not to try to investigate anything. It's mine. It's off limits. Yes. Right? The thing about it is. As they grow, they grow. They with grow each together other and, and they're and around each other for so and, long. And it, everything trust, is fine. Mutual trust, right? and then it's fine. And it's fine. But you can't think that it's okay because. You know, you know what's the crazy it's, thing? The crazy thing is if, a, if 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 a guy buys some sort of expensive sports shoe or a lady buys some kind of designer high heels, they make sure the dog knows it's off limits. Yes. But the baby, <laughs> the dog should the dog should meet the baby. The dog should, you know, they want to take an, a cool picture. They want to put the baby on the dog. They want to put the baby on the dog's back, and the dog is like. This is not. Cool. I have one client in particular. Come on. Where the husband almost get put out with his dog because the dog shoot up. Um, I don't know the brand, but you Some know the high heel shoe with the red sole. Oh, a red bottom or something like that. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Well, he needs to go online and get another one as soon as possible. She called me and she says, "Um, well, my husband is gonna move in with you just now." <laughs> <laughs> well, happens every time. It brings something in you. It has a human sense on so. it. But no, with babies, please. I mean, I, I can't say this too much. The baby is off limit for the dogs. You're not gonna leave the dog. Firstly, before you bring the baby into the home, don't think that the solution is get some sort of cloth the baby had on them and bring it for the dog to smell and everything will be all right. You walk in with something that belongs to you into the house, you should have a relationship with the dog that the dog understands it's yours. It belongs to you. So if you have problems with bringing that baby into the house, your problem is even deeper than that. Yeah. Right? Your problem is deeper than that. But to, to start with, it's off limits. It's, it's just that simple. You let them know, and you don't tolerate any rough playing, wild playing. These are for dogs in the house. Mm -hmm. When the baby is in the room, anywhere in proximity to the baby, yeah. you cut it out straight away. Yeah. So they understand that the the just way to behave around the baby is very specific. Just how you tell a child, don't play ball inside the house. Yeah, they do that for the child, not for the dog. <laughs> right? <laughs> it's it's similar, right? Yeah. So we, we would do it for the, for that, but not for one, but not for the other. Yeah. And anytime we do that, anytime we blur the lines like that, we are expecting trouble. Yeah, well, a dog is an opportunist. Eh? They, yeah, they, 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 they always try they to better try their to, situation yeah, and push always, limits, right? Exactly. That's how they find out where the limits are. Yeah. And I keep explaining that to people. Your dog is pushing you, expecting pushback. Yeah. But where his limit is, is when you start pushing back. So if you spend two years not pushing back, the dog went pretty far. Yeah. And then it gets to a point where you say, oh, this is out of control. And you try to stop it. And you try to stop it. And now, and now the dog is like, oh, now you want to. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, when the dog is a little more mature and, and he's a little big, more sure of himself exactly, because he could do this to you problems. all this time. Yeah. And now you want to put a stop to it, yeah. you know. And then calling the stranger, which is the trainer, who had nothing to do with to it. To wave his wand and perform the miracle. <laughs> yes. To, to, I... I you know, I tell people, we see, the impossible we see about right away, miracles take a little longer. A little while, yeah. You know, yeah. but we get it done at the end of the yeah. day. But, you know, because we're in this long enough. But it is, it can be frustrating. Yeah. When you have to constantly fix problems in dogs that are so avoidable. Yeah. You know. The problem is sometimes, the problem is so bad that you can't completely fix it. You just have to get it under control. Yeah, make it manageable. Hope, yeah, make it manageable so that the situation is you know, amicable between the two parties. But it's unfortunate that people take that approach and 
you know, I'm, I'm happy to be here and for you to be putting out the type of content that you do so that people get some sort of support with regards to yeah. just the basic things and making and, making a manageable situation with their dog in their home and with the their family. And the more people hear it, the more people can avoid the mistake. Yeah. Right? So, you know, the more people hear it, the more people um, can can avoid those mistakes. Yeah. That's Simply right. by hearing this podcast, you know, it's like, oh, okay, we have a baby on the way, you know, let's, yeah. let's not do this. You know, let's do it the right way. The baby's on the you way, know? get control of the dog before. <laughs> yes. <laughs> First thing, get control you know? of the dog. And get, get a crate. And get, and get a trainer. Yeah, get, get a, a trainer, trainer get a crate. You. Give the dog that alone time, create boundaries. There are spaces, mm -hmm. places, there are certain furniture that the dog shouldn't go on, should know it's off limits. And it's not because you don't want the dog on it, per se. But you have to create some sort of structure in the dog yes. mind they where the dog understands some things are okay and some things are not okay. Same with you children, right? You, totally you, you set rules. Yeah. You can't do this. You can't, you know, eat sweets before dinner. Yeah. It's a rule. Yeah. There is nothing else, you know, really against that yeah. other than the parents saying you can't do this. Yeah. That 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 becomes a rule because they say so. So uh, you know, similar with, with the dog. This is my couch. Yeah. If I'm sitting on my couch and I want you up there, I call, I call you, you. I call you yeah. up. And then you're allowed, on exactly. my invitation, yeah. you're allowed to come on my couch. Yeah. If you allow the dog to be on the couch whenever he feels like it, then he goes up on his couch. Yeah. Or her couch. Not It's no exactly. longer yours. Yeah. He doesn't know the word no. He right? doesn't have a true uh, meaning or a respect for that word. Right? It's the same when people ask me, you know, is it okay to have the dog sleep on your bed? And I say, well... If you're big on enforcing rules, you can make it okay. Yeah. But you have to enforce the rules. Right? Otherwise, the dog will respect you less. Correct. So, if you, if the dog is only up there on your invitation, and then after a while, it's okay, off. And the dog has to jump off and go in his own So, pillow. it's a privilege. It's not, yes. Yeah. And then, that, if you do it that way and maintain it, then that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. However, if you're one of those that just allows it, <laughs> you in for a whole yeah, heap a of trouble. You see, dogs start you know, resource you, guarding, and then you have a yes, whole issue of yes. somebody getting bit. You know, yeah, it's a whole you know series of terrible events. Yeah, you know. So, and I practice that at home. Yeah, right. I'm, yeah, your I'm, dogs I'm, are inside. I'm very strict with it, right? So. If you're watching Formula One, yeah, you know, okay, you can watch it with me, <laughs> yeah, right? yeah. But after that, off, off, yeah, yeah. And and it works, yeah. You know, it, it it's fine, of course. And he knows it. Well, you see, that's the thing. So impulse control is a big thing that dogs seem to. Well, dogs are impulsive by nature, right? Even humans to a point. Yeah. That's why we have laws. Right? That's, they yeah. see an opportunity. Yeah. They, they go and, for it. And you lapse in. Yeah. You know, yeah, they, they take advantage of it. They take advantage right away. You know? So if you're gonna if you're gonna have this dog inside the house, impulse control from the earliest stage is very important. Yes. Make them sit to eat, make them not bounce through doors, pushing things away, jumping over tables, jumping on every piece of furniture and using it as their personal bed, stuff like that. And you know, a lot of times the impulse of the dog is what gets them in trouble. Yeah. If the dog understands that they must control that impulse because it comes in, it, the information comes into their brain. That's that's normal. That will happen. What they do with that information, how they process it, is where you come in and how you have to teach them to process the information. Yeah. You build the boundaries from early. You set structure early. And there you have a dog that you can manage. And that dog that has the structure is the dog that enjoys life the most. You can take them out to different places. You can they could be anywhere. in and out of the house. They could be when your friends are around. Again, you build that structure and the dog has a better quality life. Yes, because you can take them anywhere. Yeah, yeah. Right? That's you right. can you you have this toolbox of of commands and 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 structure and and rules and you can apply that wherever you go. Yeah. To the dog. Right. You know, you remember Ninja? Ninja, I could take Ninja anywhere and put him in a in a in a place and he would stay there until he hears something else. Yeah. You could take him anywhere. You know, at home if if due to flooding he was he was home alone yeah um in the room on his pillow for 10 hours yeah 10 to 12 hours and because i was on the other side of the country with my wife 
Yeah, oh, no, and my son, house, was, my, son, no, no, my son was my son was at friends but where he was he couldn't leave because oh, okay, the yeah. access road was flooded yes 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 sorry yeah okay i understand the plan was for him to be back half day to to rotate it off yeah yeah and that couldn't happen because he couldn't leave of due course, to flood yeah. waters and we were on the other end and we couldn't do yeah. anything about it and he was perfectly fine he yeah. didn't pee anywhere nothing yeah. he was on his pillow sleeping and looked up as oh yeah. you're back yeah you that, and that's something you and there was nothing touched in yeah. the room yeah And, and he was a really that is how dog. that is how it should be. Yeah. You that you can leave your dog in a room unsupervised for for eight or ten hours without him interfering with yeah. anything. My thing is, if you're gonna get get the dog in the house, you need to get the training done. Yes, from yes, early. absolutely. Yeah, and, and from is, from puppy. Yeah, yeah. You know, I raise my puppies in the house yeah. for that reason, yeah. so that they right from the start they understand. And Ninja is, was a protection dog as well. Yeah. He was the dog doing yeah. multiple things. They love the true yeah. things, you know. Yeah. But he would not touch anything in the house. Yeah. So you the know, impulse no matter, to do no it, you 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 made him understand that that was not acceptable, and over time he accepted that. Yeah, even food would leave it. Yeah. Even food, you yeah. could leave something on a plate on the side table in the bedroom, and go to the fridge to get something else to add to it. He wouldn't touch it, and he wouldn't touch it. Yeah, yeah. You know, so that's awesome. training the dog. Yeah, yeah. You know? yeah, that is so awesome. Right that now, is right now, I'm working on. Uh, on force, on, on force with that. <laughs> he's not quite there yet. Yeah, yeah, he's not. He's <laughs> a Rottweiler. He has a little more yeah, appetite. Yeah, he has a little, and, and he's a little more, you know, yeah, a little more pushy yeah. than Ninja was. Yeah, yeah, but um, he'll get there. It's a good challenge. He'll get there. Yeah, right. And yeah, consistency. As a trainer, I yeah. love those challenges. Exactly. Right? Yeah, consistency. Because we excel with those. Yeah, that's you know? right. So yeah, I'm I'm having fun with that. <laughs> yeah, you know, and yeah, so. I think we we kind of covered what we yeah what, what we there's a lot more to, to say but we could do. yeah we have many more if topics we, if we don't put a stop to it then we we here in three hours yeah yeah that's right um, still talking um, I'd rather make another podcast podcast yeah, like this yeah, sure, right yeah so um and maybe people may reach out to you and and speak about what they want to hear more information yeah, on and we go more I just wanted to detail. yeah I want I wanted to 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 heed this call of the veterinary professional a little okay, bit. Okay, yeah. You know, because they're the, the, one, they're the ones suffering. Yeah. Because those those puppies that already come into the clinic stressed, you know, they're already they're already panicking when they come for the door. Yeah, they Fallas can't see when to the on top yeah. of a table, so they get bitten all the time yeah, because get, of yeah, it. Yeah, they can't examine them properly. Yeah, they, no, yeah. nothing, yeah. nothing. They, they panic for everything. Yeah. They snarl and snap and yeah. they turn into little monsters. Yeah. Especially the, the smaller dogs. Of dogs yeah. They're on the table, and you think somebody fed them after midnight, yeah. and they turn into gremlins. But because the dogs are smaller, <laughs> found owners, they are the least controlled dogs. They are the least limited dogs. The smaller dogs because yeah. they're small, so we let them do any and everything. Yeah. And a lot of time, it's a joke until it gets really serious. Yeah. And then when really the groomer bad. calls and says, "I'm not grooming your dog," yeah, because of how it behaves. And the vet says, "Go to someone yeah. else." Yes. Or you can't clean the dog ears, you can't clean the teeth, yeah. you can't get them a vaccine, yeah. you know. We need to do better by the dogs. Yeah, yeah we need to. Do is the dog at the end of the day? Is the dogs that suffer? Yeah, I mean, that's right. Humans get bitten too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but they live. Yeah, but the dogs are the ones that are under enormous amounts of stress yeah. and totally uncalled for. Yeah, you know? that's right. Even if a dog is shy and has weak nerves by nature, you can raise the dog in such a way that the dog can cope. That's right. And doesn't yeah. have to be that stressed all the time. There's new things here, yeah, they're a little scared, but they overcome it and By they move they on. Yeah. But if a dog is super stressed all the time and panicky all the time it's because, you know, the human is not there yeah. or anything you like shelter that. Shelter them too much. Yeah, that that is not yeah. doing them any favors yeah. at all. So live like a nervous wreck is unfortunate. So, yeah. Um, yeah. I want to switch gears a little bit yeah. from from the initial topic to um um you had mentioned earlier one of a big issue that arises out of some of that is resource guarding yeah yeah so big yeah for me yeah that. for me uh resource guarding is one of two of the biggest issues i face with clients calling some follow up in the training some do follow up some give up some get rid of the dog some do strange things um but resource guarding is something that is totally avoidable so puppies from in the early stage when they they have their siblings and they're nursing mm -hmm. and you feed them together they need to compete for food and sometimes competing means fighting right so they they born they born from an early age they have to do that it's survival of the fittest right or so that's what they understand in their brain you don't fight for food you get less food you stay hungry right? right so that is very natural to happen but when you take it to your home and you're giving them this bowl of food there should there's no reason for the dog to 
guard that resource. Right. So the puppy might growl and we find it's cute. We find this little puppy showing this kind of attitude already and we laugh. And then we, it, the puppy gets a little bit older and we still find it's a joke, but then we realize the puppy getting strong and then the puppy, we don't realize that the puppy is building in intensity and building in stature and in his brain he's thinking that he is, has that control of you once he gives you that response. So right. once he growls, you move away. He gets what he wants, yes. right? So this dog is building in his, and so in his brain he's thinking that I am becoming the boss here. That's what he yeah. thinks. And then you have a puppy, a year old, that could do some serious damage. And somebody may be walking past something that he likes or that he thinks he needs to guard, and you get bitten and you, you, you freak out. You, you, How did that happen? Yeah, just like this dog crazy. What happened here? It's a mad dog. He just bit me. Just Yeah, he did How bite do you. Blue? Yeah, How yeah do he did, blue? Yeah, he did bite you. You know? But so dogs see resources as things that they need to keep and selfishly need to keep to themselves. And the way of warning is to growl. So they tell you, they growl so that hopefully you go away and you leave them. We need to teach puppies that what we give them is ours. And we yeah. allow them to have it. Yes. And we can take it away at any point in time. And it's ours and right until the point that we give it to them. Yeah, yeah. Right, right up to that point, yeah. it's mine. It could well, be, the food could be in my pouch, it's my pouch. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. When, when puppies jump up and they want to get to the pouch... They get a little tap. Yeah. No, I'm I'm defending my food. This is my food. It's not yours. Don't go for it. And you give it's something that you give to them. Yeah. And even while they're eating their bowl of food, you should be able to put your hand by the bowl. I'm not saying you need to mess around with the dog and tease them, but you give them something. You allow them to have something that belongs to you. You could take it back. You could adjust it. These are things that you need to do. And I'm saying there's never a situation where you do that from a puppy and then the dog one day stops like that. And gets aggressive for the resource. It's, it's, it does not no. happen like that. It, they, they know they, better. They, yeah. So they know if better. so, one of the biggest ways, if you already have it, just drop in a little coin here. Feed the puppy from your hand. Feed the dog. The dog that is that is already resource garden. Keep the bowl of food high up on the counter. Give them some food from your hand. Feed them their meals from your hand. Yeah. Then take some food in your hand. Put it in the bowl. When it's done, take some more food, put it in the bowl. Let the dog see that when that hand goes to the bowl, to good food. things happen. Yeah, it's to bring right? food. That's a dog that already is resource garden. You don't, the last thing you want to do is to battle with the dog. Because if you lose the battle, you end up hurt. Yeah. And the dog feels emboldened, next time you will be worse. You have a, you have a bigger problem yeah. in your hand. Or you have a dog that is now petrified of you. And we don't encourage that type of thing, no. right? It's not a way, it's not, it's, it, it does not work. And it's almost like papering over the cracks because you never really fix the problem. What the dog needs to understand is that it's a resource. He has no reason to guard the resource because it's not like you're not feeding your dog, right? Yeah. The and dog is being fed. His. There's no reason to fight. You're not coming to, you're not going to eat the dog food. You have your own food, <laughs> you know? So my thing is, that is one of the best ways of if you if you don't bring a professional in to go about that. And most of the resource garden is around food. Second to that is a toy. Toy, yeah. Right? Yeah. The dog has a favorite toy, buy a second one. And play trade. He drops one, he gets the other one. He drops one, he gets the other one. Yeah, make and it you into pick a up game. the one that he dropped when yeah. he goes for the other and one. And you make it into and, a game. And so you, you just cycle them through. You cycle it through. And there there you go, the dog mind, mindset changes. He realizes he doesn't have to keep this one. You have others that you could give to him. And then he now wants to play with you with that toy. He engages you and not takes it and goes and hides it. What I do with, with, when I have a puppy and I put down the food and I allow them to eat, because my, my dogs have to eat on command. Yeah. They have to wait until that's I tell them. Even puppies. Yeah, yeah. Right? Excellent. Yeah. You eat when I tell you to eat, right? When I allow you to eat. And then while they're eating, I pet them all around the head to praise them yeah. for waiting. Yeah. And I pet them all around the head. Yeah. So all around you the desensitize head. the And whole, then from yeah. the head, it slides down the front of the face. Yeah. I scoop up some of the food, put it in their mouth, yeah. touch them all over again, right from from small until yeah. they're about six months old. So your hand is not there to take away My anything. hand in the bowl is yeah. the most normal thing in the yeah. world for the dog. That's right. You know, and if I say back off, they step back from yeah. the bowl. And then I take the bowl and add something to it and put it back And down. you put it back. So it's a bigger, it's a jackpot. Yeah. yeah. And even with, with the force is a Rottweiler and he can be a little possessive at times. But 
a neighbor tree drops some mangoes, right? And there's these small ones. And I was afraid that these swallows the seed. Yeah, that's a big problem. So he knows he's not supposed to have it. He sees me watching him yeah. pick it up. <laughs> and I call him. And he comes. He lies down in front of me. And he's trying to have his mouth closed, right? It's hot. He wants to pump, but his mouth is closed. <laughs> he has to hide and, it. And you just see the little green in front of him, right? <laughs> Sticking out. And he knows he has to give it up. Right? But he's trying to hide it. And I'm like, force. Puts down the head. Yeah. Owls. And your mouth starts to quiver. Yeah. And then he just spits it out in front of him and so, he watches so, me. Yeah, go ahead. And then I pet him. Yeah. And I be all, I'm all nice with him. Yeah. So that's a good boy. Yeah. That's it. And while, while I'm petting him, the other hand takes it. You know, and then I dispose of it. But he knows that's happening. Yeah. Sometimes he picks it up. He sees me watching him pick it up. And I don't even have to call him. He comes to me, lies down because he knows the ritual. Yeah. He knows he has to give it up, yeah. right? <laughs> so it's, he's a, it's not a whole process. He's not for chewing him. it. He's not trying yeah. to swallow it. Yeah. He comes with it. He lies down. He says, okay, I know I have to give it up, but give me a few seconds now. Yeah. yeah no, let Just me. give him a little, a little something extra. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a little game that, yeah. that, that we have, right? But the bottom line is he gives it up. Yeah. And he doesn't swallow it. And there was no fight taking And there's place. no fight. There's no yeah. argument. There's no not me getting upset with him. Yeah. You know, none of that. None of Communication, that. And, understanding. And is there. he's a, a big, super confident dog. Yeah. You know, he, he could cause harm if he wanted to. Yeah. But because of what we did with the food in the beginning, he understands he has to give it yeah. up. Yeah, yeah. And you're fair to him. Yeah. yeah. You know? And he knows from playing with the toys that ours is let go. Yeah. So he understands. He just hesitates a few seconds because he really wants to... You know, get shoot, a little, shoot a little yeah, he wants to get a little something. Yeah, yeah. He he's a Caribbean little, boy. Gets a little juicy. Mangoes is the thing. <laughs> <laughs> but, but it's fun. It's how he's trying to hide it. He's not panting. Yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, so it's 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 a in, interesting and, and a very important topic. Yeah. And when it gets out of control, it's a very dangerous yeah. one. Right? Because I've seen uh, customers that, that call me, well, he's a good dog, you know. But I find recently he... He he got a little aggressive. Yeah. I said, well, aggressive with who? Well, well, us. Yeah. And there's like yeah, 500 red flags yeah. flying up in my head. He said, what are you talking about? How how does that show itself, you know? Yeah, when we put, want to put on the leash, he growls. And <laughs> so yes. it's just putting on the leash is a yeah. problem because he knows it's being restricted. Yeah. And he has grown comfortable doing this because it started with food. Yeah, we back. It started uh, when yeah. he was half his age yeah. with food. So he, he knows and he growling is he constantly got out. away with it. And yeah. he knew that anytime I don't want something, I just growl and yeah. snap. Yeah. And people leave me alone. Yeah. So that's the way of managing But now situation. he's 110 pounds. Yeah. Right? And people are now calling for help. Yeah. Instead of calling six months prior. Yeah. You know, so as now, a resource. now as a trainer, you have to play the dangerous game of fixing well, it. You know, that's that's the other thing. It's, Sometimes it's not, it's, you can't even handle the dog. You know, you know, and a resource. People have to understand that a resource is not only something tangible like a toy or a bowl of food. It could be the dog could lying be. down on a particular mat in a particular space, yeah. to a particular part of the room, and you know you're coming to move him. A resource and the first is thing is you want to grab the dog. Yeah. What you need to do is to get the dog to come to you. Yeah. Move right? him away from that. Move him away from that. Right, and that's one of the things that a lot of times people are bitten because of that. Yeah. The dog was lying down there. All I did was pass by him. Or I was just going to get him to do something, and he bit me. Right? Yeah. It didn't happen just like that. And it can it can even get worse. It can get to the point where a dog is sleeping, and you walk past the dog, and he just happens to wake up. Yeah. At the time that you walk past him, and the dog flies up and and bites at the leg. Yeah. Simply because he has a custom that if I don't want you around, you're not supposed to be around. Yeah, yeah. That's you it. know, and this is my way of making you that's not, his, not that's be his around. Coping, his coping mechanism is to, right? to cope with it and, and to manage it, is to growl, show some aggression, yeah. show some teeth, maybe and, bite, and everything works out and good. And I've had an, an issue like this with a golden retriever. Yeah. You know? Yeah. A dog that is 
supposed to be super sweet. least expected to be, yeah. You yeah. know, they're super sweet as adults. Yeah. Like, I mean, they're little raptosaurus as puppies. Yeah. <laughs> I, I find Rottweilers are less destructive than yeah. golden retrievers. Wow, yeah, interesting. You know, I tell, I tell people, like, the only people that want a golden retriever puppy are those that never had one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it looks so nice. Yeah, yeah, they're, in, and in they're nice super companions. sweet up to yeah. 12 weeks. And, yeah. and between 12 weeks and, and adulthood, yeah, yeah, yeah they could pack anything up on, in their they could destroy some Anything remember. in their pub. They are a gun dog, they are a yeah. working dog as well, and people, yeah. you know, People fail to realize that, so they look nice, but they meant to be out working yeah. as well. They're good swimmers and all that, you yeah. know. Smart, intelligent to, dogs and very intelligent. Yeah. You have to just like Mars, you have to mentally stimulate. Yeah, them, you know? yeah. So please, you know, we need to we need to teach that puppy to understand that resources come from you, and they are given and taken away by you from the puppy stage. And one thing people don't understand, a resource to a dog could be anything that he deems to be a resource. Yeah, that could be the space that he's lying down in. Yeah, as, yeah, with invisible boundaries, yeah, yeah, you know exactly where he draws the line. That is that is his resource. Yeah, you know it doesn't have to be an object. Yeah, and that is how people get caught proverbially with their pants down, right? Because they didn't know that that was his. Yeah. Well, they're not <laughs> they, they're not mindful enough to observe yeah. that the dog is using that or has seized that space as that, and and you go into that space to get them out, and that's where the big problems yeah. come. You have to attract them to you, make the dog engage you. You know, don't have the don't force the dog to always do something that you want it to do. In the way in which you could get the dog to do the same thing is to encourage the dog or manipulate the dog to engage you, yes. and you get the, you get a better result. You get a motivated dog. And you get a dog that is spirited and does what you want it to do. You know, with some joy. Yeah. Yeah. I said it in, in in some of my videos. The first thing that you have to work on is engagement. Yeah. The very first one. Yeah. If I go to a client for the first time. There is no no sit and down taking no, place. No. There is just engagement. I make the dog have fun. Yeah. Because if you, you know? don't have that, then you and have then to. After be... a few weeks, customers ask me, so how is it that when you come once a week, the greeting you get, I can't <laughs> get when I come from work. Yeah. And it's two twofold is the answer, right? So one is for one hour the dog knows where the boundaries are. Yeah. They're clear cut, right? He knows exactly where they are. And number two is, I'm fun. Yeah. Right? Yes, I do work with the dog. Yeah, yeah. But the dog doesn't understand that he's working. Yeah. He's having fun. You're very fair to the dog. The dog dog, dog is having fun in the session, right? That's right. And they look forward to that. Some, they they recognize the the engine of my vehicle. So they they say, I knew knew you were coming before you ring the doorbell. Yeah, it triggers something in their brain, yeah. Because they're just like, oh my God, he's here. Yeah. And and they get all happy and uh, start dancing and running around the house. Yeah. Do all kind of dances. You know, and and to me that's fun. Yeah. You know, is when a dog greets you like this, you, you know you're know, doing the right thing. Yeah, yeah. and and, and you, you know you can also train them in, in no time because once you have that level of engagement with a dog, they learn super fast. Correct. Yeah. You know, and it's then the hard part is then to get owners to do the same. Well, and, and play the same game. That's, that's where we come in. Yeah, you know, <laughs> so that that can pose more of a challenge than the dog. Yeah, that's right. You know. So we do spend a lot of time working on the on the humans. Well, that's most yeah, of the, no? half at least half of the training is it's working training with, humans, with yeah, yeah, that's right, yeah, and yeah, giving no? them the structure that they now need to impart on the dog. Because training the dog is easy, teaching the dog to sit and go down and all that stuff. That's, and, that's and not oftentimes difficult. people are not being taught handling. Yeah. So the dog is being trained by somebody. Yeah. Right, and the dog knows everything with that trainer, but not with the owner. Yeah. And to me, that it doesn't make sense. Yeah. You have to work with the owner. You well, have to make yeah. them handle the dog in front of you and, and you yeah. know, teach them how to practice with yeah, their dog, how to do this with their dog. That is an absolute must. Well, that's a, it's a thing you with know. me. I teach the clients, once they start training, there's a relationship shift that has to happen. Mm-hmm. A shift from how you previously mm-hmm. operated the dog to how Correct. when we, training is not the hour that I am there. Right. Training is constant. Yes. I am there for one hour or two for two the week. But but the training is with you really yeah where you are with the dog most of the time so what i tend to do is in the first session or two i give the dog some basics yeah that's right because yeah. both being new lends to chaos right yeah 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 one of the two must know what's wanted and what you need to do yeah to then bring in the other one exactly yeah. right so once the dog has an idea what's wanted i can then teach the owner how to do it so that they can meet somewhere and then in subsequent session is to forge them to a team. Yeah. You know? 
And but it's an ongoing process it's ongoing. that, that yeah. we, during the week they have to practice with each other. And, they need yeah. to be consistent. And yeah. I always tell people it's like, you know, send me a video, send me a WhatsApp. If you have a question, don't wait until you see me. Yeah. You know, don't don't waste the week not doing something yeah, exactly. because yeah. you have a question. And the problem worsens. You know, and then yeah. you, you you're you fighting against the tide. Yes. You know. You know. So because the longer the dog is allowed to, to um you know, do the wrong thing. It's that's the harder training it becomes too. to fix. Yeah, that's right? training. They it's, yeah. it's a yeah. natural reinforcer yeah. for the dog. Yeah. So we have to, you know, turn that around and it requires um, so much more repetition yeah. of the right thing to break the bad habit. Yeah. Which is more time. All right. So it's been good. Yes, yeah, it's, it's been, been fun. Good. It's yeah, been fun. Yeah, yeah. I like I like um podcasts like this. Yeah. You know, because you you get to touch a, a whole variety of topics. Yeah. A lot of things we spoke about. Yes. And it's a lot of food for thought for, yeah. for people, you know. And um, so, yes, I'm sure we're going to do this again. Yeah, thanks for having me. You know, we, down the road, we, yeah, we're going to do again, it again. Sure. And, and, you know, keep the content going. Yes, and keep educating keep people. Keep saving the dogs <laughs> from the humans. It was nice. Thanks, Alan. You're and um, see you next time. Okay.